What is truth? What is the truth? It might not be uninteresting to perillustrate the question of truth. Truth is nothing more than the sublimation of a feeling, a perspective, an opinion. Truth is nothing more than the sublimation of a feeling of a perspective, of an opinion. A veridical statement, a truth claim, right? A statement of the truth is what stimulates our feelings in a positive manner. A false statement is what roils us in a negative manner, what commoves us in a negative manner. And I'd like to quote for you the 18... 85 to 1886 notebooks of Nietzsche. I hope you don't mind, but I'm only going to read this in English translation, not in the German. And I will also correct the translation slightly because it requires correction. The criterion of truth resides in the intensification of the feeling of power. The criterion of truth resides in the intensification of the feeling of power. It shall be so and so stands at the beginning. This is the first stage of the truth process, the truth procedure. From this later, often after a lengthy series of generations, a so it is develops. A so it is develops laterally, right? Later, it is called truth, in quotation marks. At first, it was a will to see something so and so, to call something so and so, to say a yes to one's own value creation. We compare something to that which we hold to be true according to the method in which we are accustomed to believe. So first, there is the desire for something to be true. That's the first stage of the truth procedure, right? Then our minds elevate the statement of our desires to the status of the truth. Our minds deceive us into believing that what we want to be true is objectively true. The truth is nothing more than the desire for something to be true. The truth is nothing more than the desire for something to be true. And so this is a response to someone who claims that what one is saying is true. You could say this to him or her or, or them or one. You have proven nothing, right? You've proven nothing other than that you have the desire for it to be true, whatever it is. You have proven nothing other than the desire for it to be true. It being your desires, whatever your desires are. You are an emotional projector and you are projecting an emotion. All you do is generate propaganda, the propagandizing of your own emotions. You see, that is what truth is according to Nietzsche, and I do subscribe to this idea. So truth is neither objective, nor is it subjective. It is perspectival, which is not the same thing as subjective. And I have some examples for you. All right, here are some examples. So there's a breakup. Keith and Keisha break up, right? I'll call her Kesha. Uh, let me start again. Keith and Kesha break up. They, their friends and their family members, 
I'll have different interpretations of what went wrong, assuming that something did go wrong. So they, their friends, and their family members all have different reasons for why they broke up, Keith and Kesha. Keith, of course, thinks that it was Kesha's fault. And Kesha, of course, thinks that it was Keith's fault that they broke up. But on what basis could one say that Keith's position is the veridical one? Veridical meaning truthful one, right? On what basis could one say that Kesha's position is the veridical one? On what basis? There's one example of the multiplication of truthing, right? Here's another example. One person says, books are for morons. Books are for morons. These books, they're for morons. I've heard people say this. I've read such statements, which I do find repellent, but people say them. But another person says, only morons refuse to read books. So one person says, books are for morons. The other person says, only morons refuse to read books. But both positions are equally valid. Both positions are essential to the economy of life. One is not true and the other false. Okay? Now, here is a third example. What is the capital of the state of Michigan? Well, that's Lansing, isn't it? So there's another veridical claim. The capital of the state of Michigan is Lansing. Is this then not true? Well, that statement is neither true nor false, right? If you say the capital of the state of Michigan is Lansing, that statement is neither true nor false. Now, it is a statement of truth, but that doesn't mean that it is a truthful statement. The two phrases don't mean the same thing. So if you claim that the capital of the state of Michigan is Lansing, your perspective coheres with a cluster of generally accepted perspectives and thus is christened as true, right? That there exists a state named Michigan, that it has a capital and that the name of that capital is Lansing. So the existence of a capital with the name of Lansing does not exist outside of all representation. It doesn't exist outside of the space of representation. It is a representation one that is generally subscribed to, but that doesn't mean that it is the truth. So uh, incidentally, incidentally, uh, before 1847, the accepted capital of the territory of Michigan, it was a territory back then, was what we now call Detroit. And in 1847, the capital moved from the space that we now call Detroit to the space that we now call Lansing. So the statement that the capital of the state of Michigan is Lansing is arbitrary. It's uh, based on a set of arbitrary historical concatenations. All right, here's another example that's similar to the previous one. The capital of North Dakota is Bismarck, right? Is this true? Is this not then true? Well, according to the Aristotelian theory of truth, truth is the correspondence between statement and fact. But how, uh, to kind of channel Heidegger, how does the fact disclose itself as a fact? That's a legitimate question that Heidegger was asking. I'm not a Heideggerian, but that is, in fact, a, in fact, that is a good question. But what is a fact, right? What is the factuality of a fact? We have to proceed in this Heideggerian way if we're going to, if we're going to make any headway. Um, well, a fact is a product of consensus, right? A fact is a product of consensus. It is something that a crowd of people agrees upon, and that is all. Simply because a crowd of people agrees upon something, that doesn't mean that it is true. That would be a logical fallacy known as the argumentum ad populum, the popular appeal, the bandwagon appeal, right? So why do we call that land area Bismarck as opposed to something else? The capital of Bismarck was named after the German politician, of course, 
Otto von Bismarck, who spoke of sausages at the gate to conflate two famous and brilliant quotations, and who unified the German states in the 1870s. So why do we call Bismarck in quotations Bismarck? Even the statement Bismarck is regarded as the capital of North Dakota would be suspect. Why is the name North Dakota more adequate for the arbitrarily circumscribed landmass in question than any other? Why North Dakota? Why that collocation of syllables? So values, similarly, are neither true nor false. Here's, here are some examples of this, of values. In ancient Rome, suicide was regarded as an act of nobility and heroism, right? Not so in our culture. Not so in our culture. Uh, were the ancient Romans wrong to think this? Were they wrong to consider suicide to be a noble and heroic act? On what basis could one say yes? On what basis could one say no? Similarly, in ancient Greece, the transgressor was seen as the greatest human being, right? Think of the myth of Prometheus, right? For an example. Uh, not so in our culture, though. Satan, whose name means adversary, right? The name Satan means adversary, is thought of as evil. And he, in Christian mythology, is regarded as a villain. And surely uh, Satan is nothing if not a transgressor. But we don't really celebrate transgressors or transgression in our culture. Not in the way that transgression was celebrated in ancient Greece. In ancient Greece, pity was seen as being contemptible and as being for the contemptible, right? Pity was given to the contemptible by the contemptuous. Not so in our culture, which is largely a culture of pity. And the ancient Greeks shamed outsiders. Our culture is antipodal to a culture of shame. More examples of this, more examples of this. Um, if I were to say, these are the 10 greatest songs of Blue Oyster Cult, right? These are the 10 greatest songs of Blue Oyster Cult. What right do I have to claim the universal truth of my preferences, right? The uh, gustibus non est disputandum, right? To quote the famous Latin phrase, there is no disputing about matters of taste. So statements of faith, are perspectives that are not merely irrational, but unrationalizable, right? You can't, you can't rationalize a statement of faith. If you believe something out of faith, from faith, you believe it not despite the fact that there are no reasons to believe it, but because there are no reasons to believe it. I mean, the idea that one worldview totalizes the truth the only truth is absurd, right? The idea that one worldview totalizes the truth is absurd in the same way that it is absurd to claim that you are only one thing. That is also absurd, right? The term identity, etymologically, look at the word identity. Identity means the same and the same over and over again. Identity is the same and the same. But no one is reducible to the same thing. We are all hundreds of people, each of us. So there are so many truths that it must be inferred that there is no single truth in any given context. There are zillions of truths being generated every day. There are zillions of truths being generated every single day, and any individual human being's truth might undergo multiple changes as well. Multiple permutations, multiple permutations within the course of a single day, right? Your truth might change over the course of a single day. 
and you have more than one truth for any given context. It is not merely the case that individual perception is truth, which has become epigrammatic to the point of being a cliche. The point is that individual perception is not even stable. It is mutable, right? It is mutable. I might regard something as being true one hour. Thenceforth, that truth might be regarded as me, by me, as a falsehood, right? What I consider to be true one hour might be considered to be false by me the next hour. So the truth is variable to each person and for each person, which makes it impossible to distinguish what the truth is in any given context. There are trillions of truths, I said earlier, zillions of truths being generated each day, which is to say that truth is perspectival, which is to say there is no truth. There is no truth. Truth is whatever inherited idea we have familiarized. The belief, the belief is a feeling, it's a perspective, right? It's a perspective that might be shared by many people, so it's not just subjective. That's why I say that truth is not subjective, it's perspectival, right? But we have inherited it, and we have familiarized it. We have habituated ourselves to it. But this belief, say the belief in causality, right? The belief, the belief in cause and effect relationships is a simplification of what actually happens. And every simplification is a, in quotation marks, a falsification. And I know we're in um, paradoxical territory now because the moment that we start using the word false, are we not implying that there is such a thing as the truth? Mm. I covered this in another one of my videos. However, to say it once more, we insist that statements that do not conform to our desires are false. So you hear people say this all the time. That's not true. That's false. That's wrong. Um, that's not correct. And really all they're saying is, I don't want it to be true. <laughs> That's all they mean. Uh, I find that idea unpleasant, therefore it is untrue. Therefore it is not true. Now, I'd like to quote for you uh, the German romantic poet, Christian Morgenstern, in a poem he wrote entitled, The Impossible Fact. And I'm going to translate it into the English. It's only one line, the final line of the poem. What may not be, cannot be. Yeah. What may not be, cannot be. Nicht sein kann, was nicht sein darf. What may not be, cannot be. Right? What I don't want to be true must not be true. And conversely, what I want to be true is true, which is the same thing as saying there is no truth. There is no truth. There are, there are only questions. There is only chaos. That's it. We blithely dismiss as false whatever offends our senses and whatever offends our sense of what should be true. Once more, we blithely dismiss as false whatever offends our sense of what should be true. Always assume that the person with whom you are speaking is lying to you. More often than not, you will be correct. Always assume that the person with whom you are speaking is lying to you. More often than not, you will be correct. If one thing is true, that is true. Thank you very much. My name is Joseph Sulia.
S U G L I A, signing out and signing off. Thank you very much.